today is Monday and it snowed yesterday. I'm going to flip this around here on our dirt road and see how pretty that is. One thing about living in the sunny south, typically it doesn't last that long, but we've got a good little snow. I don't know if you can see that. How much snow we got for, oh that's 37 degrees so it's kind of melting for um, Arkansas. See a good little snow. I should do a video of where to turn. <laughs> where to turn? How you know you're on my dirt road? Of course, things look a lot different in the dark or in the spring or in the summer. It's certainly covered in snow. Probably not be a good time to take a video. It's three o'clock after three o'clock. A few minutes. The only thing about it raining is that it makes our dirt road have potholes in it and get your car really dirty. <laughs> really, really, really dirty. Here comes our mailman. And it's 3 o'clock. And that does not look like the normal mailman. Hmm. But not the normal mailman. I remember carrying mail. I carried a rural route. Well, I carried every rural route in Springdale except one and eight. And that's when we had 11. They have 22 now, I think. But when the time changed and it started getting dark at five, I, there was a lot of nights I was out there after dark because this season before Christmas with all the advertising and the packages, it's just crazy. I mean, I'd have 20 foot of mail on Monday. This was when GPS just started. It was not sorted. So you'd have six or seven hundred customers and you looked at the address on the piece of mail and you <coughs> had this thing called a case <coughs> that had four or five rows around. And I, was, I always kept putting a wing on my case because my route would grow so fast. So, here we go. Jump into the rat race, sister. Where you pull out on my road, <clears throat> it's kind of crazy in that <clears throat> it's on the very top of a hill. Here, let me flip around. So, we're on the very, very top of a hill. <clears throat> so, uh, trying to pull out is not, you can't see. Try, try across the road on a horse. Jet, we typically go down the hill a little ways. You can't see if someone's coming or not until they get right up on you. It's not great, but we do love where we live. If you get if you get on the road, you better get going. <laughs> Clack to your horse and get you get get yourself a going. Praise God, the roads were clear. We had a puppy to the truck this morning and last night. When it was 21 degrees I was very concerned that the roads would not be clear but they are. I'm taking the back way to Lowell today to go pick up some trim for the house. So on a good note I am so excited about the trim and just being capable of doing something that's going to look nice. I was not looking forward to staining a thousand foot of red oak. It's not staining that's not difficult. Polying cannot be sloppy when you poly and you have to poly then you have to buff it with super fine um, Sometimes these young people act like a scalded dog if you ever threw hot water on a dog and then get in a hurry to get somewhere. Some people act like that when they drive. It's okay. So, anybody that's ever polyurethaned, I've refinished furniture, I've refinished a piano for Becky when she was young. I've refinished plenty of 
plenty of furniture and I did our hardwood floors in Goshen. Our house had carpet in it when we purchased it and I despise carpet, it's so gross. And so one day when Tim was at work and I had a day off, I took a, I don't know if I took a box knife, probably of just a butcher knife, probably may have even been a cheap steak knife. And I snuck behind the couch, which was up against the wall, and I cut a big hole in the carpet and I saw hardwood floors. Now granted, they were in terrible shape. They had not much paint, but they had where you uh, blow your texture on your drywall. They had that in mud from the drywall all over them. They hadn't even cleaned this stuff up right. They just carpeted over it. So I called Tim and I said, we have hardwood floors under the carpet and I'm going to refinish them. And he was livid because this is not who he is. He, he, his personality is if it's not totally broken, don't fix it. And if it is broken, maybe it'll get better without fixing it. That's just who he is, and I understand that. I can not relate, but I can respect that's how he's made. So he was not in any way wanting to rip up the carpet. So he said, I mean, he was furious at me. He said, you, if you do this, you'll have to do it all by yourself. So I said, okay, and I did. He wouldn't even help me pull the couch out. I kind of ripped part of the couch off, dragging it out the front door by myself didn't have anybody else to help me so I did it and they turned out so good they they did turn out good and I love my hardwood floors the one mistake I made on them was I didn't have an oscillating machine that vibrated and stayed in one place I had one with this big roller and this big sandpaper and another mistake I I did not strip the floor I just sanded it and even though I wore a mask I had a respiratory infection from the polyurethane getting in the air and getting in my lungs. Still, I'm glad I did it. But, but could, no matter how I moved with that sander, I made dips in the floor. But I guess I just got used to it because it still looked better than carpet. It was still cleaner than carpet and I love my floor. So, the next, I, I did one room at a time until I got all three rooms in the hallway done. And I I didn't even know they had such a thing as an oscillating, it just vibrates like that, right? An oscillating machine until someone knew better than me and came in and said, hey, you, know, you have dips in your floor. And even though I was, I mean, this was a man's huge heavy machine that was, had this roller on it so it was all I could do to move it back and forth um, but anyway I was happy to do that so the whole thing about polyurethane so once you stain and you let it get good and dry you put your first coat of poly on then you have to buff that out with a super fine uh, steel wool and then which that's not a problem but then you have to get every single speck of dust up with the sticky cloth stuff. Then you do another coat of poly and then you buff it all out and then you clean it all up. Then you get every speck of dust off. I had these floors, just the living room, I had a supposedly professional come in and say that they would redo it because it had been like, I don't know, 12 or 15 years. We were there 26 years. So when I did it, I got a paintbrush and I got on my knees or in a deep squat and I painted from one corner to the other. And when I got done, I laid down flat on my back in the kitchen and I cried. My back hurt so bad. Well, what this guy did is he just put this product on the end of a roller and he rolled it, which is not the proper way to apply polyurethane because you get bubbles in it. Anyway, it did look better, but I saw all the flaws because that's who I am. I am, I can see things like that. I really pay attention to detail. Not that I try to pay attention to detail. I can't help it. That's who I am, right? So I don't know why I said all of that. Just, I was a little bit, um, 
aggravated when I left at 3 in that I got up, well, I woke up at 6, but I laid there until almost 6.45 before I threw myself off the couch, started working, and worked as hard as I could work, and still couldn't manage to leave until 3, so that's okay. There'll be plenty of work to do when I get back. Uh, feed two more times before I get to go to bed, and everyone's... Uh, it's not that everybody's not doing okay. Callie's litter is still kind of struggling with diarrhea. I'm just like, oh Lord, I wish I had an answer. Oh, Caboodle came in this morning because I did not nurse her last night. I had fed the 15 with just uh, the, the canned ID and the $70 a bag for 17.6 pounds ID, the Science Diet ID, digestive. It's a prescription diet. Anyway, it's just real easy on their digestive system. They can digest it. Anyway, so I didn't nurse her last night. When I brought her in to nurse her today, oh yeah, one tit had blown back up in mastitis. And she felt, she felt so bad. She laid down in the floor by me and she did not get up for two hours. She laid down, she felt so bad Actually, I crushed up some pain pills and uh, into liquid and put down her and some antibiotics too into liquid because there's no way she could have took it. But she laid down. She looked like a dead cow, right? Like her legs were sticking. Her legs were not relaxed. Her legs were sticking straight out like a dead cow, like a stiff dead cow. She felt so bad. I felt so bad. But it didn't matter how bad I felt. It's not like I made her feel any better because I felt bad. Anyway, after a couple hours and those pain pills, she got up and she ate a little bite and took some more medicine and laid down. But when I went in there to her crate, I don't know if she peed in her crate, which is not like her. She's never done that before. So I don't know what was up with that. But I tried to put her back in her crate. She's like, no, I don't want to go in there. And I looked again and her pad was... I thought damp and I pulled her pad out and it was sopping wet. Water was coming out of it and she had not spilled her water bucket so I don't know. So I got her a clean fresh pad and then she went in and laid down. Anyway, yes, my life. My exciting life. Uh, Callie still has one hard knot in her front tit and she's still on antibiotics and Holly Berry's all better. Her teeth's all better but she's still on antibiotics thinking like <laughs> this is the insane thing all three of them is one of their front tits or teats t-i-t-s is it to be is the technical way to say that 